Reviver standby. Say thank you, Chris, for hitting the nail on that important diversion. Thank you, sir. Julius Athanga, I see you, sir. David Vision Man, IG for life. The way forward. Thank you, sir. And I'd like also to say to you that uh, by the end of the week, the acting president, Dr. Sako, will be coming to you with a very, 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 very important announcement as per the way forward for this revolution. It is going to be very, very exciting. So Friday, Friday, you do not want to miss the broadcast of uh, Dr. Sako. Again, he is going to be coming up with a very, very, very important announcement that has to do with the revolution. So please stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. And uh, invite, make sure that you are here, you are, you are on the platform on Saturday. Now, I think it is time for me, it is time for me to come to you with the uh, presentation. I again formally like to thank you for tuning in from all over uh, the globe. This is a very important policy position of the interim government that I bring to you today. And of course, I'd like to welcome uh, ground, ground Zero through ABC. Good evening, sirs, fellow Ambazonians. Sherilyn Kenyon, writing in her book, Guard Your Back, wrote, and I quote, It is never the enemy without who brings you down. It is always the enemy within. It is the one you don't see coming. The one you trust whose, whose betrayer is most later. They know your weakness and they know how to hit the lowest. It is when your back is turned and your guard is down that they move in for the kill, end of quote. At this moment in our revolution, this is the present danger that we face. Cardinal Christian Tumi, Dr. Simon Munzo, Barista Agobala, Reverend Funky Samuel of the Presbyterian Church and others, who are convening for next month what they have described as the AAC3 are trying to persuade all of us, all of us, to believing that they are preparing for a supposed all-inclusive dialogue that they hope the effected regime of Paul Beer will convene. Mm -hmm. Cardinal Tumi and Dr. Monzo say that the supposed dialogue will bring an end to the current war and usher in peace. However, the problem with the AAC3 AAC is embedded in the shadiness of the whole agenda. The conveners knows a diabolic plot, a plot that cuts off the people of Ambazonia from being heard, from being the ones that decide their destiny. The conveners assume that they have the mandate to speak for all Ambazonians. But who isn't aware that the conveners of the AAC3 are all apologists of the colonial regime of French Cameroon? Their real game plan is to bypass the people of the southern Cameroons and impose Yaoundé's will on all of us. They and Yaoundé have served, declared themselves to be representatives of the people of Ambazonia. These are the same people who have not dared to call on oppressor Paul Beer to end his unjust war against the people. They have not even as much as condemned the war. They have not stood with the people of Ambazonia in their darkest hour of need, even for one day. 
Instead, they have joined their Yawande masters to condemn the helpless victims of Yawande's aggression or to judge both of them equally. AAC3 is a ploy to bypass and silence the voice of the people of Ambazonia against whom the demonic regime in Yawande has declared war. Should that conference take place in Boya? Should the conference hold? This is what is going to happen. At the end of it, Yawande, in its trademark of lies, manipulation, fraud and deceit, will announce to the world that there has been an inclusive dialogue in which the conflict was resolved. The international community will buy it. But Bia would have continued his war to annihilate our people, calling those who resist as outlaws and as people who have refused dialogue. Fellow Ambazonians, if the people of Ambazonia allow AAC3 to happen, all our sufferings would have gone in vain. The souls of those killed would never be at rest. We would remain slaves in a more barbaric, oppressive, and humiliating country. We cannot allow that to happen. That conference cannot hold in our territory. The interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, we state categorically that no one, no one, will silence the voice of the people of Ambazonia. Not Dr. Munzu, not Cardinal Tumi. If the idea of an all-inclusive dialogue is to select those who would speak for the people of Ambazonia as they want us to believe, then they are mistaken. Mm -hmm. The people of Ambazonia can speak for themselves. Every single Ambazonian can express his or her own voice on this matter. In the midst of war, in the midst of intimidation, killings and the devilish struggle to subdue our people by force, we cannot yield to the temptation offered through this AAC3. The paid agents of the colonial regime impersonating as Ambazonians will not be allowed to derail this struggle. They will be the only ones to participate in such a meeting, and of course, not in our territory, in another country, a different country from Ambazonia. The interim government will not be giving permission or authorization for such a meeting to hold in Ambazonia. Anyone who claims to want to speak for Ambazonia through that medium, will be targeted. Again, you heard me right. They will be targeted. In 56 years of colonization, the people of the Southern Cameroons have been able to meet only twice. First, 1993 AAC1 and two in 1994. Those who were there know what they went through to be able to meet. How come then the colonial regime has today Ban the peaceful assembly of Ambazonians only to allow this one to happen. How come they can accept this AAC3 to take place in Boya? Instead of seeking for a select few who would speak for the people of Ambazonia, the interim government asked the organizers to call for a United Nations organized referendum in Ambazonia in which only, only the people of Ambazonia would participate. There can be no better way for the people of Ambazonia to speak for themselves than through a United Nations organized referendum. This is the standard practice throughout the world that wherever, wherever there is doubt as to what the people want, or there is contention on representation. The French protectorate of New Caledonia 
with less than 800,000 people will be conducting a referendum on whether or not to achieve independence or stay with France. Why not? How come? Why can 8 million Ambazonians not have the same opportunity? The purported all-inclusive dialogue will never, never be inclusive enough to hear the voice of the people. It will, re it will remain the game of politicians why the real people on the ground are neglected, who are being shot and killed, are forgotten. Every Ambazonian wants to speak for himself on this matter. And a referendum is the only way, the only option to hear all Ambazonians. A referendum is the only way to hear the voice of the people. The only way to silence the guns. The only lasting solution to the 57 years long of tyranny. A so-called all-inclusive dialogue will not solve the conflict or end the war because it will not be inclusive of the nationalist and liberation movements which are banned from the southern Cameroon by the colonial regime. It will not include, the dialogue will not include the leaders who are held in captivity in Comunicado by the colonial regime. Again, they will not include all those whose lives are at risk from the colonial regime in Yaoundé. And no one, no one should be fooled that the colonial regime will grant a general amnesty upon the, act, upon the activities of the liberation and nationalist movements. We are dealing with people who know no law and no order. Their world is as good as a passing wind. The people of Ambazonia have sufficiently demonstrated their aspiration and determination to be free on 22nd September 2017 when they came out in their masses with peace plans to express their desire for freedom. Again, on 1st of October last year, when they declared the restoration of their statehood and independence. Again, on October 1st this year, few weeks ago, when they came out on their own to celebrate their restored independence, mm -hmm. and of course we cannot forget the last elections, when they collectively rejected and refused to participate in the colonial elections of La Republic du Cameroon. But the organizers of AAC3 and the Ayamonde Masters refused to see, they have refused to see and to admit that the people have spoken. They are scheming to impose their own will on the people of Ambazonia. We can promise them that it will not. It will not happen. The interim government calls on all true Ambazonians, all true Southern Cameroonians, to see the devilish plot of the organizers of this AAC3 and boycott it. The only thing, the only thing the people can accept from them is a call for a United Nations organized referendum exclusively for the people of the Southern Cameroons and Bazonia only. No scheming for some select people to speak for the people of Ambazonia can solve the problem. The organizers of the so-called AAC3 did not speak for our people when they were being massacred, when they were being burned alive, tortured and raped by the terrorists of La Republic of Cameroon and their grandmaster, the criminal called Paul Beer. They will not speak for them through their AAC3. It's a facade. Like Satan in the Bible who wanted to use Jesus' suffering to derail his entire mission, 
They are trying to whip off false sentimentality around our suffering to derail us from the ultimate goal of independence. Ladies and gentlemen, the air theory is that we should surrender in order to avoid the suffering just as Satan told Jesus to abandon his mission in order to avoid the suffering that was waiting him. The conveners of AAC3 do not represent the people of the Southern Cameroons. I can't say this enough. They cannot purport them to speak for us. They are agents of the tyrannical regime. They use the colonial terminology to describe us. They speak the language of colonization and dare not pronounce the words Ambazonia or the Southern Cameroons. Munzu had always used the fear of war to frighten Southern Cameroonians into surrender to the demonic regime in Yaoundé. He said, Dr. Munzu said, a war would wipe all of us out. And so our best solution was to surrender our homeland, surrender our children, surrender our wives, and surrender our values, our future, to become eternal slaves for Yaoundé. In all of this, he was playing the game of Yaoundé, which believes that more violence and atrocities will force us to submit to his tyranny. They have declared their war on our peaceful people. Dr. Munzu's nightmare of war has come to pass. What is he afraid of again? What will they do to us that they have not yet done? They have burned our people alive. They have dragged some from hospitals and killed them. They have raped some. They looted and wiped entire villages from the ground. Yet, our people have stood their ground our people have shown their courage, their resilience, and their bravery. Our people are determined to go all the way. Let's not forget that through our history, all imperial through his, throughout history, I beg your pardon, all imperialists have used the same tactic of violence and atrocities to force foreign peoples to submission. Only they who can stand their ground as our people are doing will overcome. The people of Ambazonia have two choices. Either to suffer till the end and win or to fear suffering and surrender to French Cameroon. Fellow Ambazonians, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Just imagine what if Jesus had feared suffering? Where would we be today? If America had feared suffering, would it be the great country it is today? If slaves had feared suffering, where would they be today? If Africa had feared suffering and war, how would it ever have been freed? If the world had feared suffering in the hands of Adolf Hitler, would it have been free? Millions of people were killed in World War II. Cities were raised to the ground. Concentration camps were set up to kill. Yet the world fought on. The world fought on until victory. How then do the organizers of AAC3 want to deceive the people of Ambazonia who have already covered the greater part of the way to Boya to give up for fear of suffering. How? To better deceive the people, they describe themselves as God's children and mix illusory religion and mix illusory religious sentiment into their concoctions. Which God do they worship? God, we are reminded, is a God of justice, not a God of illusions. 
There cannot be peace without justice. Injustice demands that French Cameroon leave the territory of the Southern Cameroons that it has illegally occupied since 1961. Justice demands that the people of the Southern Cameroons sing their own anthem, fly their own flag, live under their own laws, rule themselves within their international boundaries. Even early law, even early law says, even early laws say so. Justice forbids colonization, illegal occupation of your neighbor of your neighbor's house, and subjugation of one people by another. The interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia reiterates its previous objective stands on any mediation of dialogue short of a referendum. Number one, the proposed mediation must take place on neutral soil, outside of a territory controlled by the colonial regime, so that all fear and intimidation are removed for all participants. Number two, the release of all Southern Cameroonians in prison or abducted as a result of this crisis. Number three, the participation of international credible witnesses, not the kind of fake transparency international witnesses who were in Yawande the other day. I am talking of such witnesses as the United Nations, the African Union, international human rights bodies. Number four, the strict application of international law, especially the United Nations Charter, the AU Constitutive Act, and other instruments. Considering the plots of AAC3 and possible other intricacies on matters of representation, the interim government takes the stand that only a referendum only a referendum will satisfy all sections of the Ambazonian population. Anyone, anyone interested in peace should be calling for a referendum for the people of the Southern Cameroons to pronounce themselves on their own future. Anyone interested in dialogue should accept that the Cameroon that declared war cannot be the right party or the proper venue mm -hmm. to hold any dialogue. Anyone who believes in a lasting solution must accept that there can be no solution without taking into account the wishes of the people of the Southern Cameroons. Anyone interested in ending the war should be calling on the person who declared the war to call off his war and demilitarize the territory of the Southern Cameroons. The conveners should not pretend that the people of Ambazonia have the power to end the war. No, we do not. They do not. The conveners of AAC3 also know all these facts. But seeing they have a different agenda, seeing they have another agenda, they think they can play on the intelligence of Ambazonians. We forbid it. Ambazonians must be on their guard against the plots of AAC3 conveners and similar plots to come. God bless you. God bless the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. We must live free or die fighting. And remember, no Ambazonia, no French Cameroon. Thanks for listening.